Hello everyone. The Lord asked me to go over some scriptures out of Deuteronomy. The first one is why so-called black Americans are called the N-word and worse and the reason is Deuteronomy 28 verse 37 you will become a thing of horror a byword this byword is or can be many derogatory uh, slurs it says you will become a thing of horror a byword and an object of ridicule among all the peoples where the Lord will drive you now why did the Lord drive us into the hands of our enemies it was because we did not keep his commandments and because of sexual immorality and idolatry our men begin to lust after the bait that was sent in to our communities in order to make us fall from within. Once the lust and the sexual sins begin to happen, our men also begin to worship the same uh, gods, small g, uh, aka demonic angels, that these strange women brought in to our communities and after our men began to behave well some of our men began to behave badly I guess you could say a lot of them the women soon joined in by way of dressing immodestly um, by being more promiscuous because these strange women were loose so it created this atmosphere of well we we have to do these things to keep up so that we don't lose our men if I understand correctly that was the mindset so they destroyed us from within. We had to do it because there was no way that they were going to be able to penetrate into our communities because God had a hedge of protection around us. But that protection left. God turned his back on us. We're still his people, but he turned his back on us and took his head of protection away because we would not listen. Now the thing is slavery, maltreatment, um, it's up to the person or people that that do it. I mean the severity is up to the person or the the individuals that um, that that do these horrible things to their slave. They took things too far. And when I say they, I mean the cruel nation that swooped in like an eagle, the Bible says, who has no pity for the young or the old, no pity for women. They swooped in once God's protection left and this is what happened they began to pillage our 
land here in North America. They took everything. They took our dignity. They took our name. They took our houses and communities and stores and businesses. They took our cars, our trains, our subways, our planes, our ships. They took everything and called it their own and said that they invented these things when really all of it was God given to his people here on North America on uh, North America's soil human beings or black people those who have six carbon I mean six um, protons six neutrons six electrons that make up the carbon element Humans were put here on the North American land by God. He gave this land to us. Um, but, like I say, they came in, called it exploration in our history books. The new world, the, uh, the discovery of, of, of the new land here. They knew it was here. They were told to stay out. They had their own lands on the other side of the oceans, right? Those were the angelic territories. So that makes Africans angelic. Not, And when I say angelic, I don't mean that that means they're good. They could be divine angels, but they can also be demonic and the descendants thereof. Why? Because angels can have children on the earth, but they cannot have children in heaven. See, angels have children. They're all around us, just like humans. And a demonic angel can impregnate a human woman. And the result is a Nephilim. Nephilim can be any size, from Tinkerbell to the Jolly Green Giant, if you're old enough to know who that is. So, the hedge of protection was dropped, and the brutality that was shown by this cruel nation far surpassed any type of normal slavery that the Bible is talking about where you don't have the money to pay off a debt so you put yourself in that person's employment it does not mean that that person that um, you owe gets to rape you beat you murder you sell you you know any of those horrible things that's not slave that's not what slavery was meant to be it was just employment to work off a debt. And after seven years, you went free. Now, you know, what these people did, or they're not people, they're from the demonic angel realm. They were called Romans. They were called Babylonians, Assyrians. And they look just like this photo that we're looking at right here. They don't look like what what Hollywood has has sold us, okay? They look like this. All right? Or Hispanic. All right? Now, what I was saying is if North America is a place for the angel of I mean for the humans and the angels came in um when they weren't supposed to, they left their first estate and they came here. So what does that mean? That means that Africans are from the angelic realm. They are not, just because they're black, they have black skin, does not mean that they're, they are human. They are of the angelic realm. So that's um, Africans, uh, Latina or Hispanic people, also from the, from the angelic realm. Hispanic people were known as Babylonians, okay? 
Chinese people also under Babylonian. So Asians are of the angelic realm. Africans, Hispanics, Middle Eastern, also Babylonian. I mean, if you look at it, they really don't look that much different. Okay, what I mean is, just put a sombrero on a Asian person, and you may not be able to tell the difference. You may think that Asian person, just because of the sombrero, is actually uh, from from uh, middle middle America, you know, uh, Central America. You may think that they they're from there. There's no big difference. The same with uh, the Middle Easterners. Take off that uh, turban and the white uh, attire and put on a put something else on them, and you could mistake them for another type of person. That's because Babylonians are a very, very large group, but they have separated themselves into individual units here and over there to make us think that, you know, these they're all different. When really, they speak each other's language and they're the same people, really. So, Europeans are from the angelic realm. Alright? The only Europeans, um, or I would say Caucasian people that are human from the human realm are those who originated here in North America from the with, with an Irish background. They too are human. They usually have dark hair, very dark hair, and very dark eyes, which are the genetic traits to make you human. All right, the next um, verse that he wanted me to go over is Deuteronomy, same chapter, chapter 28, verse 43. And this chapter is, I mean, this verse is dealing with us as human beings, as so-called black Americans, sinking lower and lower. It says here, The foreigners who reside among you will rise above you, higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. And we see this to this day because we are the people. These um, verses describe us. No one else has been in slavery or captivity and or captivity, meaning you're working for someone else, not having your own land, your own title, your own country, other than so-called black Americans. They claim, they say, we are from Africa, but we're not from Africa. Just because you're black doesn't mean you're from Africa. Just because you're Caucasian doesn't mean you're from Australia. It's ridiculous, okay? So, we see when people come over here, they are given way more than they give people who, who built this country, who actually belong here. They give them way more stuff. And they get a, a better start, you know, free this and free that even free education you know so we see them I mean people from everywhere you know get business opportunities in our neighborhoods and they won't even give us a loan we have to struggle to get a loan and please don't let those images we see on TV you know, the black families, you know. Don't let that fool you like we've arrived or something. We are still under bondage. The majority of people, black human uh, Americans, do not live like what we see on TV. The majority of us struggle every week 
hand to hand, you know, check to check. Once we get it in, it goes right out, barely above the poverty line. If we are, most of us, a lot of us are not. We are, we are definitely in poverty. But what I mean is barely keeping our heads above water. Okay? Trying to decide can we take our kid to the, to the doctor? Or is she going to have to wait and hope, hope her tooth doesn't hurt? Because we need to pay rent and the lights and get the food and we don't have room for any extra um, debt or something that may come up we don't have room for that okay most most black Americans so-called black Americans live like that okay and we know this right we should know it but T if you watch TV you know sometimes you can think that a lot of black people have arrived and you know but no we're doing well considering you know they gave us nothing and they still harass us harass us daily but you understand what I'm saying other groups come over here and they're given way more stuff than what they want to, you know, help us with, you know. And we are working. We are striving. It's not like we're just not trying to do better. We are. It's that, it's that they have their foot on our neck and they pretend that they don't. And then they ask you, why can't you uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know. When they know why we can't, but they pretend, they pretend like it's our fault, but it's not. And they know it, and, and most importantly, God knows. And that's all that really matters. Because when we stand before God, it's all going to be told, and it's all going to come to light. They know it. I don't know why they act like they do. They act like they're not afraid. I don't know how they can do it. You know? But we'll see what happens. All right. The next one is Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 and 48. Therefore, in hunger, thirst, poverty, and nakedness, you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. And we do know that we are the people who were yoked with irons and um, chains. Okay? And we are still that way. It's a mental yoke now. Um... It's still there. It's still there. The next one is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, where it talks about us being on ships. So that makes people believe that we need one of those big ships, you know, with the sails on it to come from Africa and bring us over here. No. The ships are not those aren't the ships if anything if it was that type of ship it was leaving North America with us aboard taking us to Africa they took a lot of Judah over there from what I understand and now they try to say that oh well you guys came from this area here Judah came from this area over to here no it's in reverse okay so the verse reads, The Lord will send you back in ships to Egypt, which means slavery, on a journey whereof I said unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. 
and there ye shall be sold to your enemies. You will seek someone kind to buy you as a bondman or bondwoman. That means just regular employment, right? But there will be no good buyer. So the people that bought us were brutal, evil, right? They put us in shacks. No, nothing to keep the, the, the winter air out. The rain leaking everywhere. No food. Rags to wear. And we were expected to harvest our own fields. These were our fields. Corn fields that the Bible talks about. Those were our fields. And who has the most corn fields? America. Wheat. Olives. Acacia wood. We are. North America is the land of the Bible. All the things that you find in America are in the Bible. You don't find these items, all of them, in other places. You find every biblical item in America, in North America. But you can't find all these things in other places. That's a fail safe. So, how do we get sold on ships? Down the rivers, all the extensive rivers and canals that America has is how we were taken on ships. So if you were captured in St. Louis, which was one of the 12 tribes cities, if you were captured there and then taken on a ship down to uh, Memphis, you were in Egypt. If you were captured in New York and taken down to Florida by river on our many rivers, that's how we were taken on ships back into Egypt. Egypt is the southwest, okay, in the, of America. That's what we call it now, the southwest. And Assyria, which, which is the cotton and tobacco and all those kinds of crops that is southeast we were in the northeast and the northwest okay so we were taken down to the south and by the way if you are a black American and you hear my voice you need to move out of the south immediately pray to God to about what I'm saying there are silent race wars that are happening and there is no media coverage meaning people are coming up missing and dead if you have black skin or white with very dark hair very dark eyes heed my words please the Lord has told me these things to share with you please pray about moving north of Kentucky and stay east of the Mississippi River. But remember that you need to stay off the coastlines as well. So, you know, you need to be at least 250 miles away from the shores, away from all the coast, okay? So anyway, that is how we were sold from the, from the north and I mean North America from our northeastern lands and a lot of our lands some of our lands went into uh, the northwest but not you know very far northwest but some of it and Canada that's where we were that's where the Hebrew people were our cities Chicago St. Louis, New York, Toronto, all, all of those huge cities were our cities. They captured us there from these 
large cities once uh, God took his hedge of protection away. They burned our cities, which is why you have all these fantastic stories about how a cow kicked over a candle and burned down all of Chicago or whatever. It's all lies. We were at war with these individuals coming in who were actually stronger than us. I mean, physically, uh, because they are of the angelic realm. So they automatically are stronger than, than the humans. An angelic being is a thousand times stronger than a human being. It's like trying to fight uh, Superman or Wonder Woman. And it was a whole mess of them, okay? And their children. And they also, the children are strong. They only pretend to be afraid of us black people. Really, they are monsters. Okay? Hiding in, in skin. You know, white skin, Hispanic skin, black, African skin. You know, and I don't mean any harm when I say they're monsters. I mean in strength. They can overtake us, overpower us anytime they want to. They just pretend. And they egg us on like, I wouldn't take that if I was you. Knowing, knowing that we're walking into a trap. Seriously. Oh, it's so much, you guys. So anyway, those are the four verses. I hope that this is edifying. Please uh, pass it along, this information. You know, we are at the end of days. That's where we are. That's why we're seeing the severe weather. That's why these other quadrants are getting hit really bad with severe weather because of the, the mistreatment that was done to us in these areas. These are the people, the remnant of these angelic uh, people or individuals, I should say, that took us down to the south. If you're in Atlanta, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, you need to get up out of there. North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, you need to move north. If you're in the southwest, you need to move east and north. And if you're in the northwest, you need to move east. If you are black or of the human race meaning genetically you have very dark eyes and very dark hair. Normally, humans have brown skin, but there are some on the other end of that rainbow of brown who are so pale that they themselves think of, you know, think that they're Caucasian, but they're not. Okay? They they are actually us. So, if you fit into that category, either of those, please pray about what I'm saying. Please uh, consider your safety, your children, uh, the safety of your children, your family, your, your aging parents. Um, you need to get out of there. Um, also, uh, stay out of big box stores if you can. Have your food delivered if you can, your supplies delivered. Uh, go in pairs, in groups. Uh, consider public transportation. Okay? So I guess, I guess that's it. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I hope this is a blessing to you. Until next time.